again here I am it's Thursday it's two o'clock and I'm back talking to you live from my craft room in sunny Portmore I'm happy to report the sun came out about an hour ago um, I've got the window over there it's mostly blue sky which is nice um, it's not as cold as it was all the frost has melted and I'm very happy to be here talking to you so I'm just going to have a quick glance at my iPad and make sure that's all working okay Refresh it to try to find the latest thing. I'm not showing up there yet. Oh, and there I am. Good. There's always a delay. Um, I never know quite how long it's going to be before I can see myself on the screen, which is not always something I want to do, but it does at least help me keep an eye on what you can see. And if I've pushed everything right out of, of shot when I'm showing you things, at least I can hopefully notice and uh, correct it for you. So how are you then? I can see there's somebody there already. Say hi so I know who you are. Um, yes, I can't believe it's Thursday already. I don't know where this week's gone. Um, it's been a pretty busy one. You know what it's like when you go back to work after a couple of weeks off, which is exactly what I did. Um, it's always exciting when there's a new catalogue launch. My telephone's been busy. My email's been busy. Um, I've been placing orders today for several people, which is really nice to do. I've got some more to go in. Um, and it seems to me that you are all actually really enjoying the new catalogues and most people who are ordering are getting something for free with celebration so win-win is what I say okay let's have a look at the comments Rosie's here hello Rosie I've just been messaging you hi um, Pam is here hi Pam how nice to have you I thought you were walking today but maybe I've got my days muddled Belinda's here hello Belinda uh, and Mary's here lovely well hello Mary and welcome well, uh, today then, uh, we're back to the mini catalogue and I'm highlighting just one suite today. On Tuesday I went through the catalogue and showed you my favourites and I did pick this out as one of my favourites um, and told you that there will be more about it on Thursday. So here we are, it's Thursday. So I'm going to be looking at the Sand and Sea suite with you. So if you've got your catalogue handy, grab it, um, open it up to page 40 because I'm going to be talking you through what's in the suite, showing you some of my things so you can get a much closer look um, and at, at the actual things rather than just a photograph. And then I've got some projects to show you and a couple of techniques as well that you can use with the suite. So I'm hoping that will be interesting and that's going to take us uh, through about an hour of chat and crafting together. So if you haven't got one, grab a cup of tea. I've got a cup of tea over the back of my desk. Um, and I will just check if there's anybody else that's joined us. Oh, a little bit of chat, which is so nice. Rosie's saying hi to Pam, Belinda and Mary. And Pam is saying, oh, the war it was yesterday, but they had to cancel because of lockdown. OK, I did wonder, but then I wasn't sure if you were in a bubble with the person you were walking with or quite what was happening. So I'm sorry you didn't get your walk, um, but I got the day wrong anyway. So <laughs> there we go. Um, all right. I'm going to cover over the camera lens and turn you down to my desk. So bear with me while it all goes yellow. As always, I will try and remember to talk to you as I'm moving you, so you know that I haven't just gone away. I'm hoping there's not going to be too much noise and disruption in my house today. My husband is working from home, um, as seems to be the norm now. He's on a Zoom in the kitchen, which if you don't know my house, is right next door. My son is working from, uh, sorry, not working from home, he's at home. Um, he works on a building site and it was so icy this morning that they couldn't work. It was too cold to be pouring concrete or something. So he's been at home all day. He's been out for a long walk with his dog, but he is now back. Um, and the last time I looked, he was cooking bacon and sausages in the kitchen and trying very hard to get it done before my husband's Zoom call started. So at least that's a stress I haven't got to deal with here in my craft room. OK. Oh, and I've forgotten the buttons. OK, so I'm just going to cover you over again. You see, this is what happens when I get chatting and forget what I'm doing. What I've forgotten to do is change the settings and um, fix the upside downness. Ooh, and I haven't even covered over the lens. Have I? Let's try that. Is that better? I'm hoping I haven't accidentally hit a special effects button by mistake that's happened before as some of you on my team know we had a team meeting where i had bouquet dots all over me which was not a good look and i couldn't work out how to turn them off 
I don't think I have. I think we're all right. OK, so I'm just going to tilt this a little bit. So I'll tell you when I've got everything, how I think I want it. Trying to get as much as I can in the picture. I really could do with a taller stand for my phone, but um, the budget is not going to run to that on top of everything else just at the moment. So keep buying, please, and then maybe I'll be able to. <laughs> OK, Mary's saying hi to everyone. She's just back from a walk at Milford. It was a bit chilly, but no wind. Yeah, the wind has at least dropped, Mary, hasn't it? It was a was it northerly or northeasterly? I don't know. It was absolutely bitter. I think it was probably coming straight across from either Iceland or Siberia, but it's been so cold in the wind. So I think the air temperature is much the same, but it doesn't feel quite as cold today. Thank goodness. I'm really not a cold weather person. All right, so here you can see my copy of the catalogue and I've got it open at page 40 for the Sand and Sea suite. I am a huge fan of the beach. I'm a big fan of sitting on a beach in the sun and I love to go in the sea if it's warm. So if we're talking tropical sea, then I'm absolutely in there. If we're talking even the Solent and definitely, you know, <laughs> the English Channel, I'm absolutely not in there. Mary saying there were two men swimming at Milford, good heavens. Russell and I went over there on, mm, I can't think which day it would have been, maybe New Year's Eve or New Year's Day, can't remember. Anyway, um, and, and there were quite a few people in the sea there, I could not believe it, admittedly some of them in wetsuits, but even so. So yeah, I don't do cold water at all, so um, yes, I don't do much swimming around here. However, I do love the beach, I like like to think about the beach, and I just think this suite is beautiful. I love everything about it. So here are some gorgeous samples. And if I move the catalogue along a bit, um, you will have this obviously in your catalogue as well. All the items that are in the collection. If you love everything, it's worth just pointing out, and I'm just going to slide it back now, that here you can actually order one of everything that's on the next page and there is just one code for it, which saves you having to list everything out on your order form, which makes life a lot easier. That includes getting the stamps and dies at the bundled price. So uh, if you order the Sand and Sea Suite, you get the stamps and dies, the embossing folder, the um, beautiful little opal rounds, which I'll show you properly in a minute, the pearlescent paper, the seaside shell stickers and the designer series paper. So that's all in the suite. And if you turn over one more page, that then gives you um, a much better view of the stamp set, showing you it at actual life size, which is much bigger than the picture on the box. And some extra samples here. So there are loads of samples in the catalogue for this as well. So I'm going to move the catalogue now and I'm going to show you some of the actual things. Rosie says she likes river swimming. You're a braver woman than I, Rosie. Rivers are still still too cold. And they've also got things like fish and weed in them, which I'm also not very keen on. <laughs> Belinda says she was brought up by the sea, so I always love anything to do with it. Yes, it's Salcombe, wasn't it, Belinda, that you were brought up in? Somewhere I holidayed a lot as a child and absolutely love it. I've got friends who live there and um, one of my absolute favourite parts of the world. All right, so let me show you the stamps and the dies. So this is a huge stamp set. There are 23 images in this. There's a mixture of um, images and words. And I'm just flicking my catalogue away. You can probably hear the pages going, just to double check how much it is. It's 24 pounds on its own. Um, obviously you can get it with the dies. Um, I think it's a steal. Um, so 23 stamps. There's a lot of word stamps. There's some outline stamps. There are some two-step stamping stamps. So they come in pairs. So you've got like a shading one to colour in your shells. Um, and they're also, some of them are what we know, what we call distinctive stamps. So these here, where the stamp is designed so it picks up different quantities of ink in different areas. And that gives you a really 3D image when you stamp it. And I will show you some of those uh, in a little while. Belinda saying, yes, it was Sorkum. I thought so. I have picked up some of the, the little shells on here on Sunny Cove and Mill Bay and so on in Sorkum. So, yes, very happy place for me. Rosie's saying that she nearly went in the river the other day to rescue a friend's garden chair, but she managed to get it out with a garden rake. Well, thank goodness for that, Rosie. I'm not sure 
January is a good time to be going in rivers rescuing chairs. <laughs> this is very intrepid of you. Goodness me. All right. And I've got the dies here. I've put mine on a magnetic sheet, but I have actually got a, a piece of card with all the dies cut out on them. So I'll show you in a minute. Um, but it's uh, it's quite a, a big die, this main die. I'll take that off and show you. There we are. So this is pretty much the size of my hand. And then there are some other dies there as well, which if I bring back the catalogue, I can show you that the die set cuts out this small shell, the two bits of seaweed, the sand dollar, and then you've got this very large background image here as well. Oh, and the starfish, I've forgotten the starfish, there he is. So let me bring in some bits of card because they will show you much more clearly what everything looks like. How many of you have got some of this suite already? Have any of you ordered it? I know there's one or two demos here who might have some already in their stash. I'm also just going to move that light a little bit and see if I can get it so there's less, less shadow on here. I don't know if I can or not, but let's try. All right, so this is just a piece of white card that I've just stamped every single image onto it. So these shells here, there are five, one, two, three, four, five shells, which are the distinctive stamps. And I'm just going to lift that up much closer to the camera. And I hope that you can see the detail on there. They are absolutely stunning. They're like a photographic rendering of the shells. Really, really beautiful. Oh, I need to put it up a bit. Sorry, I can see that you're only getting half of them. Hopefully I've done that the right way. I'll wait and let my iPad catch up. Yes, there we go. So those are beautiful. These are the shading portions for colouring in the shells. Then you've got um, some other, uh, not that one, there we go, this one, which is just an outline of a shell. You've got an outline uh, starfish and a sand dollar. So these are not the distinctive stamps, but they are just little outlines. A little texture stamp here, which could be all sorts of things. It could be bubbles in the sea. It could be grains of sand. And then lots and lots of words. Uh, friends are like seashells. You collect them along the way. Happy birthday to my beautiful friend. Love you to the beach and back. Thank you and for you. Uh, those will be my most inked sayings in here, I'm sure. Wishing you the very best. You're unique and completely amazing, which is nice. Um, it's not one you're going to use on every single card, but sometimes somebody needs to hear that. And it's just really nice to have a, a stamp with these pretty fonts to say it for you. And I'm so happy I found you. That's really nice. And obviously they can work in combination. So you could have on the front, friends are like seashells, you collect them along the way. And then on the inside, I'm so happy I found you and so on. So that's that one. Then these are the dies. So this is that big die, which sort of looks like something and nothing when you see it like this. But don't judge it yet, because I'm going to show you one or two of the things that you can do with it in a minute. And then these are the stamped images that are cut out by the dies. So I'll say straight away, don't bother just getting the stamps. You definitely want the bundle, um, because this die in particular is absolutely stunning. This really large die. Now there is an embossing folder in this suite, which probably won't show brilliantly on the camera. I'll give it a go and I'll lift it up and see if I can show you. So it has a selection of seashells on it, some bubbles and some seaweed. So I'm hoping you can see a little bit of that. You won't see all the detail until I show you the piece that's actually been embossed with it. It is one of the 3D embossing folders. And what's so brilliant about this is that this large die cut fits exactly into this folder. So I'm going to, I've got one, I should have had it on my desk. It's over the other side. So bear with me and I'm just going to grab it. I'm going to have to, oops, unclip my microphone. Okay, there we go. Let me just clip my microphone back on. OK, so I asked who had got some of this already. Rosie hasn't got it yet. She's <laughs> waiting for me to enable me. Rosie makes me laugh. She, she says I enable her with a lot of the products. Belinda has the suite. It's a close tie for her favourite with a fine art floral. Me too, Belinda. 
She hasn't played with it yet though. Okay, so I know you've been doing all sorts of other things, Belinda, so I won't accuse you of slacking. Uh, and Pam has a friend who has a strong passion for marine conservation and is always litter picking on the beach or rock pooling or snorkeling and she's getting married so this set is going to be very useful and well used. Oh now this is going to be absolutely perfect for that. Um, I'm sure you've got your eye on the pearlescent paper for a start Pam so um, so lovely I shall look forward to seeing what you create for her. So this is that large die cut this is the embossing folder and I'm going to open up the embossing folder and on the the front which is the part with the Stampin' Up! logo I'm just going to lay my die cut in there um, I could lay it on either side but the inside of the front cover is recessed debossed so it's actually very very easy to line this up because it kind of just drops into that recess and I'll hold it up um, in the hope that you might be able to see that I've just dropped that in and matched up the pattern essentially and then I find the easiest way to close it is just to shut it down there and then I can turn it over that way. So again, I hope you can see that that is fitting in perfectly to the embossing folder. So once I've run that through my machine, this is what I end up with. I'll put it down so you can see it is the whole thing and then I'll try and move it under here slowly so I don't want to make you feel ill but just to give you some of the detail. And I hope you can see it is absolutely stunning. Now, of course, you can use this embossing folder on just a rectangle of card for a card front or to go on a bag or on a scrapbooking page. Um, and you will get those little bubbles I described. They're all scattered all the way around. But I think this is going to be the way I mostly use it, which is to die cut it first and then pop it in the embossing folder. Yes, Rosie said, wow, absolutely wow. Um, when I first saw these, uh, I really hoped that they would work like that, and they do. So well done, Stampin' Up! for thinking about that too and sizing everything so it works. And it's really easy to do, I promise you. The first time I tried it, I got all the embossing spot on in the right place. So that works absolutely brilliantly. So that is my third thing to say. If you are getting the dies, you absolutely want the embossing folder. Um, it's well worth paying a little bit more and getting that too and if I put it on this dark piece of card I'm hoping you can see these little air bubbles so those will be embossed if you uh, put this onto just a plain sheet of card rather than a die cut but obviously you don't get them on the die cut because they are around the the weed and the shells all right so that is the stamp set the dies and the embossing folder let me show you a few of the other things now I don't have the stickers, but I have got everything else to show you. So these are the opal rounds. And I will try and get the light to catch them. They're obviously not actual opal, um, but they do definitely have the look of opal. They are, I, was, I can't work out if they're white or clear. I think they're, they're kind of translucent really. They're not completely clear but they have um, glitter in them, which is pink and turquoisey green, depending on where the light catches it. So very like an opal, as they move, they change color. And there are two sizes, there's larger ones and smaller ones. Um, and if I get some rhinestones out, I could give you a comparison, couldn't I? So you can see how they compare with our rhinestones. So this is a standard pack of our rhinestones. So if I put those together, these are the largest ones at the bottom. So they are about the same size as the smallest opal rounds. And then the large opal rounds are larger. And if I put them sideways, they are like a semicircle. If you cut an orange in half, I don't know if that's going to show or not. Probably not. Um, but they're like a, a, a sphere, half a sphere. So those are the opal rounds. They are absolutely beautiful 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 and then i'm going to show you the patterned paper so this is uh it's called the Sat just sand and sea designer series paper the colors in it are blushing bride flirty flamingo melon mambo sahara sand seaside spray and so saffron so very very pretty colours and I absolutely cannot decide which side of this paper I like the best. 
it's 12 by 12 and there are 12 sheets in a pack and you get two of each design in your pack so I'm just going to try and move oh, see if I can get my microphone cable just to sit out of the way so I can manipulate these large sheets of paper so this one has got sand dollars all over it it's pink pale pink um, with a beautiful watercolour background and the other side of it is absolutely gorgeous this is obviously all done with watercolours so you've got the so saffron um, you've got melon mambo in here it's really really beautiful um, it reminds me of uh, either the ripples you get on a beach but in slightly fantastical colours um, or of patterns on a seashell but magnified but either way it's just really beautiful Sandy's joined hi Sandy she loves the sand dollars yeah they're gorgeous I wish we could pick up sand dollars on our beaches here so Pam hasn't got any of this yet, but she'll be getting it soon. I think you will, Pam. <laughs> this is sea urchins on this one. So you've got them in Seaside Spray, Sahara Sand and uh, Flirty Flamingo. And on the other side of that is this gorgeous uh, watercolour paper again. I think they have watercoloured this and then dropped salt on it. Um, and the salt absorbs some of the watercolour and then you get these beautiful patterns on it. Um, so that's perfect for kind of watery backgrounds. Then we have this one which is so saffron with lots of different little starfish on it. I'll pick that up and give you a closer look. Rosie says that pink and yellow one reminds her of marbling. Yes, it does look like that. And this has also got a, a patterned background, like a texture, which the little starfish are on top of. So that's really pretty. Um, I have to move this one sideways to show you, I think. So this is a little bit like, I don't know, the sea at sunset maybe. It's beautiful yellow, and then if I move it across, moving gradually into dark pink, or if I turn it, I'll move it this way to show you. It really is absolutely beautiful. Again, done with a watercolour wash with salt dropped onto it and then rendered digitally gorgeous. So this one has a pattern of little dots on it, which is really, really pretty. It features all the colours. And it's actually the pattern you get, if I bring in the one with the sea urchins, if you get a sea urchin skeleton, you know you get this little dot pattern on, on it coming round um, from top to bottom of the skeleton. So it's that pattern, uh, but obviously wouldn't have to be uh, used with sea things at all. You could use this on anything. It's so pretty. Lee's here. Hi, Lee. You love the salt blue. Yes, it's absolutely stunning, isn't it? Rosie's saying the papers are amazing. I really think they are. They are absolutely gorgeous. So this one could be watery ripples. Absolutely lovely. Sandy's saying, how are you, Rosie? This one's got an all over pattern of all the uh, sea and uh, seashell and starfish images from the stamp set. Got the sand dollars in there as well. And then this is another beautiful one, which I will let me turn it that way and I'll, I'll try and kind of move it sideways. So again, you've got a selection of colours all washed into one into the next. Absolutely beautiful paper. And then this is a much bolder pattern. Um, you would be able to cut out these seashells very easily with scissors. They don't fit the die. I've tried it. They're not the same scale, but they wouldn't be difficult to cut out. And on the other side, you've got this one that looks just like wet sand seen close up. It's really lovely. It looks like what I get on my feet. If I look at the bottoms of my feet when I've been walking on wet sand, <laughs> it's this sort of pattern. <laughs> so that is the patterned paper, which I really think is absolutely stunning. And then the last thing to show you is the uh, pearlescent speciality paper. So this is, again, 12 by 12. It comes two sheets to a pack. And I've cut some of mine up, as you can see. And again, I'm going to try and move it in the light in the hope that you can see the pearlescent finish on it. I've still got a shadow from my phone. I'm sorry about that. Let me see. Mm, if I move my light, maybe if I move my light to the side, let's see if that makes it any better. It might, I think it might have made it worse, but we'll see. So that's the pearlescent paper, which is really beautiful. And I have a card where I've die cut the pearlescent paper and I'll show you that in just a minute. 
so that is all the bits and pieces in the set so sandy's saying wow she saw it in the catalog but decided the suite wasn't for her now she's changed her mind my job is done sandy <laughs> i'm glad i think this really is one of those things that just looks so much better when you see it in real life sandy's trying to craft every day so she doesn't think about lockdown that sounds like a really good idea um Rosie's saying to Sandy that her back is still bad and she's fed up with lockdown, but she's trying to plan something positive every day. Yeah, so so Sandy's saying, yeah, she's fed up too. I think we're all so fed up, aren't we? Um, Rosie likes this too. I'm glad about that, Rosie. You said you knew I would enable you. So <laughs> excellent. All right, so what shall I what shall I show you first? Let's show you this. So here's a card I've made. Um, I think that light is worse there on the side. I'm going to put it back where it was, which is in front. And I'll see if I can angle it down a little bit more. Um, I'm just trying to get rid of the shadow. I've obviously got my phone sitting above. And unfortunately, it casts a shadow. Let me see if I can improve things at all. That might improve things. We'll see. All right. So here's my first, first card here. So I've got a seaside spray base and a layer of Sahara sand. Then I've got some of the beautiful blue paper. Then I used my layering ovals. I cut a scalloped oval and then a plain edged oval. The scalloped oval is from seaside spray card. And this one is from that one, which I said looked like the bottoms of my feet after walking on the beach, that paper. <laughs> and then I've stamped and cut out some of the shells. Now I did cut all these by hand, which took me Oh, not even five minutes because they're very straightforward shapes. The sand dollar there is a die for, but I was cutting the others by hand. So I decided that I would just cut that anyway. Um, the baker's twine, uh, the blue on that is seaside spray. So that coordinates beautifully. That is from the, I think it's the flowers for every season trim pack. There's three trims in one pack. And this is from that. And then these are some of those opal rounds, which just give the finishing touch. They're beautiful. The thank you is from the stamp set, same stamp set as the shells. And this little oval circle here is from the many messages die, which I showed on Tuesday. And this little seashell here, you know how sometimes when you pick up shells on the beach, you've got a scallop shell where the hinge hasn't come apart. So you've got both halves. So I just cut two of those and butted them up against each other and just added a little opal round in there. So that is how I made that card. I am just going to show you how I got the two colours on the stamps for this because you know how seashells are so prettily coloured. I wanted to try and replicate that. Let me pull over some white card. So Rosie's saying it's a lovely card. Thank you very much. Um, what else? We've got lots of comments today. This is great. Belinda's saying that she's also spending a lot of time in her little studio. Sandy's saying this is a pick you up suite, seaside and fun. Absolutely. Think about those lovely warm days. Think about escaping. <laughs> Sandy sends hugs and kisses to everyone. Thank you, Sandy. Um, and Rosie said, I've lost it now. Oh, she started reading Captain Tom's autobiography. He's such a positive man. And Belinda says she wants to read it too. She's reading Tim Peake's autobiography at the moment. Well, look at all of you. I'm reading a book called, I think it's called The Reindeer's Eye which is set in Finland um, amongst the Sami. Uh, I want to call them the Laps, but I gather from the book that that's considered a great insult. So they're not the Laps, they're the Sami. But um, it's a very good book too. Lee likes Tim Peake's book. Rosie got it for Christmas. Um, which one is she saying? So Captain Tom's autobiography, I think, is the one that Rosie got for Christmas. And she says that... Tim Peake and Captain Tom have lived a life not like Lewis Hamilton. Yes, I think that might be a com comment on the New Year's Honours, is it, Rosie? So I'm going <laughs> I'm to move on. Um, <clears throat> move on from that. I won't tell you what I think about it. All right, so I was going to show you how to get the uh, several colours on one stamp image. And actually, I don't need to open my box of stamps because I had already got some here. I'll bring in a couple of ink pads. Now, there are lots of ways to do this, and you probably had a go at it yourself. Um, you can use Stampin' Right markers. You can use all sorts of, of other ways. Uh, I'm going to do it with a finger dauber. So I've got Flirty Flamingo and Sahara Sand ink here. 
Um, now the way I've been, liked doing it with the shells is to fully ink up the stamp with one colour. So I'm picking Sahara Sand here. And then I'm going to pick up just a little bit of Flirty Flamingo on my dauber and just daub it in a few places quite gently on here. Uh, if It's quite hard to see the Sahara Sand. It's easier to see the pink. So if I put that behind it, maybe you can see, maybe you can't. But either way, I'm just going to breathe on it because I've been holding it for a little while and then stamp. So there we are two colours on one shell. I'll do this other one as well while I'm here. I should of course have my stamping mat underneath. I'm breaking my own rules. My stamping mat is now underneath my light to try and correct the angle on it, which I don't think is what it was designed for, um, but it seems to be working okay. But actually these stamps work beautifully. I've got a few sheets of grid paper here, so they work really nicely on that. Okay, Lee, Lee's reassuring me that you're paying attention. There's quite a lot of chat going on about honours. I'm not going to, I'm not going to read those comments out because um, I like to think of my page as not getting too political. Um, so feel free to express your opinions. I'm going to keep crafting. I think so. That is how I stamped the little shells on here, and I just cut them out. So that was actually quite a quick card, although there's lots of detail on it. So the next one I'm going to show you. Uh, is one with the shimmer paper. I'll lay it down and then I'll pick it up in just a moment and show you the detail. I'm just going to have some tea while I'm at it. Rosie says she's paying attention to. Oh, and Lee said that's nice. Good. Thank you, Lee. Oh, Rosie says it wasn't about the honours, it was about the length of life and the interest. Fair enough, Rosie. I'm sorry I got the wrong end of the stick there. OK, so this card, once you dissect it, is actually very simple and not very involved at all. But because this die cut has so much detail, it looks like it was a lot harder work to put together than it actually was. I have a So Saffron card base. I've cut some of that beautiful pink and white, uh, no, not pink and white, <laughs> pink and yellow paper so that it's very nearly the same size as the card front. I've just got the, the narrowest of borders. Then I die cut the large shape from the pearlescent paper and then I put it through the embossing folder but before I embossed it I actually stamped the corresponding shell shapes or shell images I should say onto the die cut so if I can I don't think I can find what have I done I wonder with that other oh here it is the die cut there we are so I'll move that aside for the minute. When you cut out with that large die, you have these big flat areas here and these fit the stamps perfectly. I'll just pull out one to show you. So you can see that the stamps just fit in there perfectly. So you can stamp onto your die cut um, and because they're photopolymer, of course, you can see exactly where you're going. So... So that's what I did. So I cut this out of pearlescent paper and then I stamped it. Now, I should just say that on the pearlescent paper, because of the, the pearlescent finish on it, the ink takes a lot longer to dry. It will dry, but I would leave it overnight if you possibly can. Um, if you haven't got time to do that, then once you've stamped it, turn your die cut over on some scrap paper and just press it all over and that will allow the excess ink to come off onto your scrap paper and then your die cut will be pretty much dry. It will of course mean that your stamped images are paler because you've removed some of the ink but that will work really well if you don't have time to leave it to dry. Um, Rosie's saying it's another lovely card, thank you. Mary is saying could you snip the shells from the die cut and Rosie's saying she doesn't see why not. Yes you're absolutely right Rosie, you can and I've got one in a minute that I will show you where I've actually done that so you'll be able to see the finish on it and that again makes it so versatile. So it was a three stage process for this then. I cut the die from pearlescent paper, I stamped the flat areas with ink using the images in the stamp set and made sure that it was dry and then I popped it in the embossing folder in just the way that I showed you earlier. And so if I lift that up you can see that I've got this, I hope you can see anyway, this pale coloured detail on my stamped images. 
So the, the weed, the seaweed, is just plain pearlescent paper, but the little shells have got Sahara sand or so saffron or blushing bride on them. Then I added some of the opal rounds um, and I added a little ticket. This is also cut from the many messages die that I showed you on Tuesday. You know that one with all the different bits in it. It's so useful to have some of these little interesting shaped labels pre-cut ready to stamp on. Um, and then I've just stamped thank you on it. This is the thank you from the Friends of Like Seashells stamp set. So that's that one. Very quick and easy because all the detailing is just done with the stamps and the dies and the embossing folder. All I really had to do was lay down the paper, stamp the ticket and then put it all together. Rosie's asking what colour did I stamp in? So this is Melon Mambo. That seashell is so saffron. That one is Blushing Bride. So is that. And then these two are Sahara Sand. Okay, so that is that one. All right, so the next thing I tried was die cutting from watercolour paper. And I came up with, first of all, this card. So watercolour paper, as you know, we've got it in the catalogue. It die cuts really beautifully. Thank you for the heart. Um, this is part of one. You can see here, Mary, that I have actually cut a shell out from there. and I'll be showing you where I put it in just a minute. Um, if I lift it up, I hope again you can see the embossing. The embossing is really crisp on this watercolour paper because it's so thick. So for this card, I die cut from watercolour paper, then I embossed it in the embossing folder. And then I decided which section I wanted, which was actually the top section of the embossing folder. Um, I don't know how helpful this will be. Let me put that on. No, hang on. Let's find this one. There we go. I haven't got the embossing on here, but I have got the die cut. So if I lay that on top, you can see that I've just taken really the top half. I'm hoping. Yes, that is in, in shot. Just the top half here. Um... But I embossed the whole thing because I will use all the shells, but I then just trimmed that part off and it trims off really easily. Lorraine is here. Hello, Lorraine. She says she's sorry she's late. She was clearing off after her first session with her new jelly plate. Any tips on how to clean it? Um, yeah, pull as many prints as you can. I mean, some of them will really be ghost prints because there'll be almost no paint or ink on the plate. And then I just go over it with a baby wipe and that's all I do. And that seems to work really well for me, Lorraine. So I don't know if anybody else listening has used a jelly plate. Lee, you might have used a jelly plate. Um, have you got any tips for cleaning it for Lorraine? Lorraine has just got herself one. I hope you enjoyed it, Lorraine. Have you got every surface in your house covered with beautifully printed pieces of paper? Belinda saying hi to Lorraine. <laughs> Rosie saying her birthday's the 5th of June <laughs> and Belinda saying this is lovely she's made a mental note to add watercolour paper to her experiments yeah really do it's absolutely fantastic all right so I die cut it in watercolour paper I embossed it and then I trimmed off the section that I wanted to use with just with scissors it was very easy to do um, and I trimmed it before I coloured it. If you are going to trim it, I recommend that you cut the pieces to size before you do any water colouring on it, because that way you don't then cut your watercolour and end up with sharp white edges to the paper where the watercolour hasn't soaked all the way through the paper. I hope that makes sense. So then all I did, and I'm going to show you this technique in just a moment, I just brushed water over the watercolour paper and then just brushed on ink um, you can either press a clear block into your ink pad and pick up some ink on the block that way or you can squeeze your ink pads to push the ink pad onto the inside of the lid and then when you open it you can use the inside of your lid as a palette. So that's how I coloured these and again I don't know whether the camera will pick it up but um, I then used a little bit of Wink of Stella just on the shells. I didn't put it on the weed but I did on the shells just to add a little bit of, of iridescence to them. Ruth's here. She's back on the main computer, so she made it today, and she says hello to everyone. You're very welcome, Ruth. Nice to have you. Rosie and Belinda both say hi to Ruth. 
and Lorraine enjoyed her jelly plate. She had good fun, a few disasters, but got some backgrounds. And she's just just left with some dry, crusty edges. I'm assuming that's on your jelly plate. <laughs> Hopefully you will find that will come off with um, with a baby wipe. I've never had a problem getting that off my jelly plate. So that's how I painted the watercolour. And I am going to show you that in just a minute. Um, this stamp is from the stamp set. The paper is from the paper pack. And then I just brought in a little bit of the linen, I think it's called braided trim, which I've just pulled out and frayed a little bit just to, to add something. And of course, I've put the opal rounds on because I just can't not put those on. They're so beautiful. So I'll set that aside and just show you how I painted a little bit of the watercolour um, on here. So find my water painter, which is here. And I'm just, what shall I do? Something that's not, there we go. Let's do this shell here. So I'm just going to paint water all over the top of it. This just helps the ink to blend on there. So that's wet. And then if I bring in my ink pads, I'm going to squeeze them and use the inside of the lid. Ruth's saying, can we have a demo of a jelly, of a jelly plate? <laughs> they are a lot of fun, Ruth. Um, I must say, I'm not sure I am going to be demonstrating them for you, at least not for the foreseeable future, just because I have so many other things that I need to do. However, I can recommend on YouTube videos by an American lady called Carolyn Duby. Um, that's Carolyn, spelt as you'd expect, C-A-R-O-L-Y-N. And then her surname is D, D for dog, U, B for Bertie, E. Um, I'm pretty sure that's the right name. Uh, Lorraine, let me know if I've got that wrong because I know I recommended her to you, but I think that's her name. Um, she's a very vivacious American lady with a real kind of anyone can do this attitude, which I love. Um, and if you look up her name and then, then Jelly Plate, which is spelt G-E-L-L-I, Jelly Plate, as in gelatine, um, put that into the search box on YouTube, Ruth. You will be able to see it in action. Um, if I can ever fit in showing you how to do it, I will. Um, but they are a great deal of fun. You can for, for printmaking, you you pull one-off prints from them, um, and you can make your own background papers and so on. All right, so I've got my wet watercolor paper. I've got my water painter. I've got some Sahara sand ink, and I'm just going to paint my seashell. And depending on how much ink you put on, it will be darker or lighter. Let's get a little bit more brown on there and then I'm going to clean off my brush just by squeezing some water through it and pick up a little bit this is flirty flamingo it's quite a vivid shade so I don't want it to be too dark there we go and I can just completely randomly paint some pink in on top of the brown and the water helps everything blend you can see how vivid it is if it's straight from the the ink pad box I'm just going to put some water on that and blend that out a little bit if you've got a seashell book you could get some guidance on colors Lorraine is saying yes Carolyn Doobie is good I must have got the name right thank you Lorraine and Ruth's saying it sounds like fun another technique to find out about yeah it's really fun Ruth so obviously this needs to dry but if I just hold that up for you there we go hopefully you can see the color on that so it's super easy to do. Um, you don't have to be exact and precise. In fact, I think they probably look better if you're not exact and precise. And if I show you my finished card again, that is how I coloured this watercolour die cut. You could also colour uh, cut this from shimmery white and emboss it in the embossing folder and then colour it in exactly the same way. That would look lovely. You wouldn't need to add Wink of Stella then because you'd have that shimmer in there already. And I'm sure you could also use the um, pearlescent paper. Let me pull a piece of that in um, and colour that. But it would take a lot longer to dry. You might need to get your heat tool on that to speed up the drying, um, which I didn't actually mention. I talked about letting it air dry overnight. You could, of course, use your heat tool on the pearlescent paper to speed up the drying of the ink. OK, Lorraine's saying jelly printing is fun but messy. Yes, absolutely. And you also want to set aside a good length of time for it. I don't know if you managed to spend all morning on it, Lorraine. Um, but I do think that uh, once you start, you don't want to stop. So you need you don't want just 20 minutes of it. 
drinking some tea then. This is the last project I was going to show you. I think this might be my favourite. Which is a little box. So this is one of the pizza boxes. Um, as I'm sure you know, they're in the annual catalogue. They come pre-cut for you and you just fold them up. They're very, very easy. There's no gluing, no nothing to do. Um, I've put a layer of Sahara sand card and then a layer of that paper that looks like sand on the top. And on the sides, I've used the same Sahara sand card, but I've used the paper that's a little bit like water. I was thinking that, you know, this was like a little bit of sandy beach surrounded by water. Um, I've die cut exactly the same way uh, from watercolour paper. So I've cut this large die from watercolour paper. I've then put it through the embossing folder and I've then watercoloured it exactly as I just showed you. But then what I've done is I've cut out the individual elements. So on this card, I cut out the top half, of, if you like, of the die cut. But for this one, I've actually cut out individually some of the weed and some of the shells. And really, if you look at it, it's just a little bit like snipping the tabs. Did you ever have those sheets of coloured scraps when you were a child? Or maybe you've had them with your children or grandchildren, um, where you've got these lovely images which are just kind of held together in a sheet with little paper tabs. So it's a bit like that. It's, they're very, very easy to release uh, the, the individual images. So Lee says she's such a sucker for a box that it's gorgeous. Thank you, Lee. Um, I'm going to tell you a few comments on gilding flakes. I'm going to come to that in a minute. <laughs> so that's all I've done with this. I put a little bit of Wink of Stella on the shells. Of course, I've added the opalescent rounds and I did find the perfect contents for this box. So I'm just going to show you some of those Gillian chocolate seashells with the praline in them. So that did seem to me the perfect thing to go inside the box. Um, the inside of these boxes is food safe. It's plastic coated, so nothing is going to soak through to the outside and spoil your decoration. And it's quite safe to put food in here. So that's what I filled up my little box with. Rosie's saying yum. Yeah, <laughs> it might not stay full for very long in this house, Rosie. So that is my box. So there were a few comments on the, the gold flakes. Rosie was, uh, uh, Lorraine was saying clearing up takes a long time with the, um, the jelly plate. It's fun but messy. And then Rosie's saying after this she's going to unleash her gilding flakes. Rosie and I have been having a little bit of a chat about, about gilding flakes um, and how best to contain them. I'm going to be talking about gilding flakes this time tomorrow when I look at the fine art floral suite. I have been having so much fun, I can't tell you, with the gilding flakes. Um, you know, at this rate, everything in my house is going to be gilded. They are just wonderful to use, incredibly easy, and they're not that messy. Um, so those of you that really detest mess, actually, they're not too bad. Um... Belinda says she hopes Rosie's got a good vacuum cleaner. She got she got gilding flakes everywhere. Oh no, did you, Belinda? I'm sorry about that. Rosie's got a Dyson, a golden Dyson. <laughs> Lorraine's in favour of the chocolate seashells too. Sandy says that she's going to have a go at this later this week. Brilliant, Sandy. Make sure you put a picture up for us to share. Lee's saying it's genius. Well, thank you, Lee. <laughs> Mary had these chocolates and you ate them. Oh, but you've got the perfect justification for buying some more now, you see, Mary. You haven't got to feel guilty. Um, <laughs> Sandy's saying, Mary, did you really? Um, Rosie's got to watch that, even if it's on catch-up. Oh, yes, yeah, the Gilding Flakes tomorrow. Yeah, do have a look. Um, Pam says these are her favourite chocolates, along with Ferrero Rocher. She's going off to look, at, look for Christmas leftover chocolates. Do you really have such a thing in your house, Pam? We never have Christmas leftover chocolates in the, in the house. Um, ours have, have all long gone. Um, I actually bought a box of these specially to do this project with because I just knew I wanted to put them in um, and I had to hide them. So let me bring back all the projects I don't know if I'll be able to get them on the camera all together or not so I did three cards and a box there is so much that you can do with this suite I just think it's really really pretty um, I love the colours that are featured in the paper and those are the ones I've used but of course you can do your projects in any kinds of colours you like 
Uh, I like everything about the stamp set. The words on it are beautiful. And I think the way that the the dies and the stamps and the embossing folder can all work together is just absolutely fantastic. Um, completely brilliantly done. Um, I'm so impressed with stamping up with this. Um, my all day spring extravaganza is going to feature this suite so there will be lots more summery projects on their way. We usually end up with flowers in the spring because that's what I suppose I most think about with the spring but I thought what the heck let's use this and have a lot of fun with it for the spring extravaganza. So I'm just looking over to my date sheet to remind me which day that class is going to be live on Facebook and it is um Oh, for goodness sake, you'd think I would know this, wouldn't you? March the 20th. <laughs> so I'll be setting up a special Facebook group um, for a live all-day class. There will be three, three live sessions, which I'll then upload to YouTube afterwards. So if you don't use Facebook, um, people will be able to, to see them on YouTube as well. And I know some people will be watching this video after the live on YouTube today. So for your information, that class will be accessible via YouTube. Um, the last date to book it is going to be um, February the 5th. I do not have information available to send out yet completely finished, but uh, I will have very soon. If you're watching this either live or on the replay and you're interested in doing that uh, class, then please let me know and I'll make sure to send you the information as soon as I can. Um, I'll be sending you a big box of stuff in the post. Um, You'll have everything you need for the class except for ink pads and stamps, but the stamps um, will be included in the class. So this set of stamps are going to be included in the class, along with lots and lots of other things as well. And then I will be making all the projects. Um, there are usually six projects for my all day class. I'll be making them live, uploading the videos to YouTube. So you'll be able to make in your own time or make along with me live. It's usually a really nice day. I did my Christmas extravaganza in that way as we couldn't all meet together in a hall. Um, and it actually worked surprisingly well. So that was really nice. Uh, Mary is asking, what's the Garden Wishes class? Mary, I am just finalising the details on that. I had hoped to get that done before Christmas, but I'm afraid that didn't happen. So that is still on my list for this week. But what I will do is make sure that I send you the details as soon as they're done. Uh, you're not the only person who's asked for them. And I'm sorry I haven't got them ready, but I will get them out to you very quickly. So the Garden Wishes class is uh, running in, well, I'll be sending out the video links and the packs in February around about the 19th and the booking for that class closes on the 22nd of January so I'll send all that information out okay we had a few more comments here so Pam says she does actually have some leftover Christmas chocolates my goodness Rosie gave hers to the food bank so someone's gonna be very happy with you Rosie Sandy didn't have any chocolates this Christmas she forgot to buy some gosh I can honestly say that's something I've never done <laughs> Ruth likes Lindor. Oh, me too, Ruth. So Sandy likes the cards in the box. Thank you. So did Belinda. Belinda saying yes, please, to the spring extravaganza. Thank you, Belinda. I will make sure you get all the details when they come out. Um, Rosie saying yes, please. I'm not sure what Rosie's saying yes, please, to. Let me know, Rosie, what you're saying yes, please, to. All right, so I'm just going to cover this up and then come back to the camera and talk to you again face face front as it were remember to do the um, little settings buttons this time so that I will hopefully um, not be upside down and back to front with you I'm looking madly for my list of um, sweet samplers which are coming up um, because oops, there we go the sand and sea sweet I'm going to do a sweet sampler on it as well and I can't remember if it's April or May I think it's April and I think the fine art floral one is May I think um, so anyway those are coming up as well so look out for those but I hope that I've tempted you with this suite um, I just think it's beautiful I think you probably do as well from the comments that you've been giving me which is lovely um, let me have a look oh Rosie's saying spring extravaganza thank you Rosie I will put you on the list and make sure that you get the information for that as well um, Lorraine is saying her jelly plate is now clean. Oh, excellent. I'm glad to hear that. 
and Pam is saying the spring extravaganza lovely so to anybody else watching this on the replay if you want to be sure to get information on either of the classes I've mentioned just let me know send me an email or a message or a comment um, and I'll make sure that you get on that list and then I will also be putting the details on my website which is sallybowman.stampinup.net and I normally also create a Facebook event for them so on my Facebook page they will show on the events tab as well so hopefully you'll all find out about everything one way or another so just leave really the only thing left for me to do is say thank you so much for joining me it's always a pleasure it's been so nice this week to be chatting online to people and I hope very much to see you here again tomorrow two o'clock um, we're going to do the fine art floral suite and lots about gilding flakes you're in for a treat so I hope to see you then thank you so much and bye bye Oops, trying to find the off switch. And I've got to take my camera out the stand. There we go. All right, bye everyone.